in a city where everyone's looking for someone. Who doesn't love a good rom-com? The bitter antagonists drawn together? Just Joe Fox. In I'm in the book business. The temptation of escaping the friend zone? We did it. They did it. And the dangers that follow? You OK? I'm not sure about anything. Hi. Once the genre was a giant. Romantic comedies were one of the cornerstones of the box office. That genre in particular throughout the 90s and even into the early 2000s was very strong. But as the success of superheroes spread. I can do this all day. Yeah, I know. What people would be willing to leave home for changed. <laughs> we don't like that. <laughs> yeah, what gives? We like our romance without so much punching, you know? These comedians created a podcast celebrating the best and worst of rom-coms. And now they have something new. You clean up pretty good. Ticket to Paradise is a rarity, a rom-com opening in theaters with major stars. To see uh, like George Clooney and Julia Roberts, the like penultimate uh, rom-com couple, and come together on the big screen, it's huge. Excuse me, ma'am. But this weekend will be critical for lovers of the genre. Let's be honest, it is on life support. I think we really, especially right now, want human connection. This culture critic says we need rom-coms more than ever, but the industry doesn't respect them. Anything that is perceived as feminine in our society, we look down on. We think it's superficial, we think it's vapid. The fact is rom-coms didn't die. They just relocated to streaming with fresh faces and new stories to tell. To all the boys I've loved before, that was like a really powerful story of love, not just because it was these like cute little high schoolers, but also because you saw a woman of color have agency and autonomy. Regardless of whether it's on the big or small screen, our desire to swoon over others isn't fading away anytime soon. Eli Glasner, CBC News, Toronto.